Hi everyone, in today's video I am going to discuss another type of experimental study design. In my previous video, the link of which is in the description section below, I explain what is the after only experimental study design. In today's video, I am going to explain what is the before and after experimental study design. Now before you get into this video, you have to understand what is an experimental study design. So an experimental study design is a study design normally uh, created by researchers uh, to explain or investigate the causality of a phenomena. So what happens here is that the researcher or someone else introduces an intervention and the researcher waits for some time for the intervention and its effect to take place after which the uh, impact of the intervention is studied to establish a causality or establish that the intervention caused the uh, change in the outcome. So in my previous video I discussed what is the after only experimental study and I discussed the advantages as well as the disadvantages when to use it when not to use it. In today's video, I'm going to explain uh, the before and after. Now, the before and after experimental study kind of overcomes the flaw of the after only experimental study, but it has its own flaw as well. Now, what is before and after experimental study? Now, in before and after experimental study, you have a baseline group that you create and then you cause an intervention and then you study the effect of that intervention on that baseline group which becomes the um, after intervention group right so after in after only experimental design you did not create a baseline group because of which a lot of examiners and reviewers often question the validity and reliability of the sample or the way the data was collected because you kind of rely on historical or secondary sources of data so to overcome its deficiency you uh, employ or a researcher and employ a before and after experimental study design where the researcher is controlling the baseline group it's controlling the variables and then creating an intervention on the baseline group and then studying the effect of that intervention on the baseline group in terms of the outcome so here an example could be that you have a group of students maybe they are fifth grade students and that uh, you um, expose them to practical assessments uh, practical uh, uh, practical assessments or practical work and then you test their knowledge so you have a baseline group you can do a test of their knowledge before the intervention then you subject them to a practical kind of an assessment work or a practical kind of teaching work and then you assess their knowledge again post the intervention and see if there is a change in the knowledge so that way you are kind of controlling the base group uh, you know who what the sample size is under what circumstances the data was collected under what circumstances the intervention was carried out and then you study the effect of that intervention on the same group to establish that whether the change in the effect or the outcome is due to the cause of the intervention so has intervention changed uh, the outcome has intervention in this case led to an increase in the students knowledge right so there is a advantage here however there is a disadvantage as well the disadvantage here is that you cannot um, singularly explain that it was the practical assessment or the practical teaching methods that led to the increase in the students knowledge unless you have another group that is a control group so here you need to have two groups to establish whether the practical assessments or practical work or laboratory work leads to an increase in knowledge um, uh, so you need to have two groups here uh, both groups will have a baseline data both groups will have uh, some baseline knowledge about uh, that subject and then while you subject while you subject one group uh, uh, that is the there is a control group and there is an experiment group so the experimental group or the treatment group undergoes the intervention and then you measure a change in their knowledge whereas a control group does not undergo that intervention and you measure if the knowledge is the same so here you are trying to show that the increase in the students knowledge is because of the intervention so on one group the intervention is caused and the other group the intervention does not um, uh, does the intervention is is they are not subjected to that intervention so which means that if there is any change in the knowledge observed it is because of the intervention 
uh, you could also design a group here where you say okay one group undergoes a practical assessment whereas the other group undergoes a multiple choice questionnaire or a multiple choice assessment or a multiple choice kind of learning uh, where learning is very theoretical whereas in one the learning is very practical and then you measure the change in the knowledge through which you can then determine that the practical way of teaching or the practical way of assessment is what is causing the change in the students knowledge and not um, anything else because if you have only one group and you are subjecting them to the intervention and then measuring a change in the impact that doesn't tell you whether the change is because of the practical assessments or the laboratory work or the practical way of teaching or there is some other variables that you have not accounted for but if you have two groups who are similar in nature who are similar in the baseline data who are similar in the knowledge in this case then you can clearly establish that subjecting one group to the intervention has caused a change in this group because the other variables there are controlled for in both the groups so i hope this uh, makes sense to you and if i have missed something uh, please mention it in the comment section please like comment share subscribe and i look forward to seeing you guys in my next video bye